So I wanna to talk today about what we are all no doubt seeing that's being magnified, which is the divisiveness of opinions and beliefs and what we hold to be true for ourselves right now during this lockdown. And I, for one, have experienced it since speaking up and out and making a stand for what I think is okay and what's not okay. And the, I'm not even gonna call it backlash because it's not backlash, I don't feel it that way but I am able to hold and witness and allow everyone to have their opinion without needing to enforce or needing to ram down another's throat my beliefs and my thoughts and what I feel to be true right now during this lockdown. The war that is existing and the divisiveness that is occurring in this state is quite incredible. In fact, I think that's actually one of the big, biggest problems is the fact that we are so fixated on needing another person to see our view, to do what we believe is right, to either obey or not obey, that that is creating so much angst and so much, well, there's no solution in that when we are taking such a divisive stance. And I know, look, I know that it takes such courage and it takes an enormous amount, I believe, of internal work to get to a state where we can stand up for what we believe to be true without being concerned about what other people think, for one, because a lot of us are people pleasers and we don't like other people not validating us because when we make a stand for something, either people are validating our opinions or not. And when we are not validated, validated for what we believe to be true, a lot of us take that as I'm not accepted, I don't belong, I'm not lovable and I think this is something that we really each need to look at in our own lives is where are we not standing up for what we believe to be true whether it's about COVID or not and why do we not stand up for what we believe to be true because we are afraid of other people's judgment and so to be able to rise above that and to allow hi Kylie hey Shana thanks for being here when we can rise above uh, the need for other people to agree or not agree and to truly allow people to have their own views and opinions and to accept and respect it all, isn't that democracy? I mean, isn't that where solutions will unfold when we can allow ourselves to hear another person's opinion? It doesn't mean we have to agree, but when we can sit actually above it all, we can also be open to what other people say, have to say and I'm not saying that's necessarily gonna influence us, but it allows us to hear with an open heart and an open mind. Maybe there's some validity in what other people share. You know, I'm not for one gonna stay, stand here or sit here and say, my, what I believe to be true is right. It is only right for me. But if somebody offers me something in the meantime that resonates, well, I'm certainly in a pos position because I'm not in a space of needing to be right. I'm, no, I'm not so fixated on a stand of what I'm doing is right and what you're doing is wrong. It's this finger pointing which occurs at the level of oneself. If we take responsibility and notice where we are showing up in that way and needing another to agree with us and to walk beside us in the same way that we show up in this world with the same set of beliefs. It's just, it's crazy because people are not going to. You know, I used to think that if people didn't agree with me or if didn't, people didn't have the same opinions, that I couldn't be friends with them. I mean, God, wow, what a place that was. And it was very divisive. But where I sit right now, I can witness another person's stance do I like it when I'm judged? Um, I can say I actually rise above it now and I can say, okay, well, they have their opinion and they are so entitled to it. You know, you're entitled to think that I'm doing the wrong thing if I pull my mask down and walk because I can't actually breathe very well when I'm walking. You're entitled to having your opinion. Does that mean that I'm going to feel, does it mean I'm going to feel shamed? Yes, yeah, sometimes I might feel shamed, but it's not going to change what I do because I'm grounded in who I am most of the time. And I'm very clear that the most important thing we do during this time is to connect in and really start to speak our truth without fearing what other people are going to say or without fearing whether other people are gonna agree with what we have to share. The other thing I wanna talk about is powerlessness. And the thing that I'm hearing more and more 
is how powerless people feel during this time because of the restrictions that are being placed on us. And so what I would invite you and I would give you permission to do is to get a journal or to get a piece of paper out or to go on a bit of a rampage and talk about all the things, name all the things that you have power to do. I have power to walk outside and sit here and do this live. No one's got me locked up in my house. I have the power to get up at any time of the day that I want. I've got the power to choose what I put inside my body. I've got, a, I've got the power to choose the thoughts that I think. I've got the power to do what I choose to do throughout the day. I have the power in every moment to choose how I want to respond to this. And when we take our power back and we realize that we actually have no power over anything but ourselves, nothing, then we can restore that power and be empowered. And then from that place, make choices, think different things, act in a different way according to being empowered. And so I think it's a really important thing to do right now because I, for one, don't want to see myself or other people around me losing their sense of power to the point that whenever we get out of lockdown, we literally hand over and it's like they have the power and we don't. We have to remember, we have to remember inside of us that we never had the power over anyone, anyone or anything but ourselves. So when we actually really get that, when we truly get that, then we know that nothing outside of us can change our internal environment and therefore we do create whatever it is that we want to see and experience throughout the day. And that's one that's that's basically being so centered that despite the conditions that go on around us, that we are not rocked by disturbances, whether it's the disturbance of being locked down or the disturbance of a child that has a tantrum. It is really one and the same. And you might not agree, but ultimately it's the same thing. We have the power over one person, one thing, and that is us. So I invite you and encourage you today to get a piece of paper out and start writing and re-empowering yourself. I don't even know if that's a word, but empowering yourself and, and remembering all the things that you have power over in your everyday life. And see how you feel after that. See how, foul, how powerless you feel after that because you won't. You can't. When you go on a rampage and remind yourself of all these things, you will feel more and more and more empowered. Hey, Sally. Hello. What's your light bulb moment? I want to know what your light bulb moment is. <gasps> tell me, tell me, tell me. Hi, Karen. Hey, Gary. Hello, Catherine. Long time no see. Cherie. Oh, my God. I want to hear. What's your light bulb moment? Kylie, please share. Um... Anyway, I'm going to sign off. But yeah, the, the, the messages for today is notice where you are needing other people to believe or agree with what you see is right or wrong, whether it's COVID or not. And where can you reinstate your power and remind yourself that you actually have the power over so many things? Yes, not over the government, but we never did. We never, ever did. And now it's just being shown in lights that we never had any control or any power over anything but the dominion of ourselves. That is it. <laughs> yes, we can only truly control and have power over ourselves. Thank you for popping that in the feed, Kylie. Mm. Yep, and when we know that and we really get it, we realize that we are super duper powerful. And that no matter what the government chooses to do, we're powerful. And we've just got to keep choosing that and keep reminding ourselves of all the things that we do have the power over. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to sign off now. So much love to each of you on this gorgeous Melbourne day. Quite surprising. The sky is blue. The weather is warming up. And we are definitely going to get through this in a more empowered way. And I am committed to that committed to that. So I'll leave it there. Until tomorrow, lots of love. Bye.